guys, it's Kelly here. I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring the second stamp set from Colorado Craft Company's newest release. Um, if you missed it, we already did The Witch, um, so I will link that at the end of the video. Um, that is The Fabulous Witch. And then today we're doing The Harvest Scarecrow, and we're going to be talking a little bit about shading with grays. So this is part of the Big and Bold series. This scarecrow is super generously sized. I'm working on an A2 size card, um, but he will nicely fill up a 5 by 7 as well if you'd like to make that size. Um, I am sliping, stamping him slightly off center um, just so I'll have a bit of room for some kind of sky behind him and for my sentiment. Um, but other, I mean, I think he's super fun because I, you guys know if you watch my channel, that I love versatile stamps and he is a stamp that can go cute or spooky. And I think that's really fantastic. Um, and so just so you know, um, the, this, like I said, there's this, this mini release, um, but Colorado Crafts is also having a sale on their Halloween stuff. So, um, that is currently going on as well. I'm trying to remember what it is. It's like automatically added to the cart. They have them all linked. You can shop the link below. Um, but they, uh, they're having quite the sale on all of their Halloween items. Uh, the Obviously, the exception is these three items in the newest release, but they have some really, really great ones uh, from past releases as well. So I have stamped this down and created a mask using Eclipse masking paper, and then I'm just applying this. Just one tip with the masking paper, if you go to uh, like put your mask on and you're having a hard time getting it lined up, just try another section of the stamp first. I was trying to line it up at the bottom Bottom, and I was having a little bit of issues getting it lined up. I had a much easier time when I went from the hat down. And then I am going to add um, just a little bit of a sky around him, almost like the card is like a close up of him um, at night. And then we're going to do kind of like a, I don't know if I would call it a glow, but kind of like a spotlight kind of. Um, we're going to add lots of, of light to him, um, even though it's a night scene, to really kind of brighten him up. Um, but when I'm going in and doing my background, I've just chose blues. Uh, the reason I chose a like a true blue background is because my pumpkin is going to be orange, and blue's natural complement on the color wheel is orange. So I'm leaving it just a little bit uh, brighter around him. This is going to help draw the recipient's um, view directly to our image by leaving kind of a brighter halo around him. I am going to go all the way out to black. Um, be just because you can see like just the difference between the top and bottom there that it makes such a huge difference in the contrast so that real that lighter color really kind of pops forward and since he is going to be so um well i want certain parts of him to be bright that's why we're shading with grays um but i do want certain areas to be super bright and i want it to stand out against that dark background so I always do my ink blending twice. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go in and put in um, kind of like a little bit of, I'm leaving my mask on for this, um, just like a little bit of stars in the sky around him because again, I'm approaching it as if it's like a close-up of him while he's out there in the field. Um, and I'm using Perfect Pearls to do this with just a number two round brush and a little bit of water. I'm not working on watercolor paper, so you want to be conscientious of how much water you're adding to your cardstock, uh, but just a little bit. I've never had an issue. Once that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and remove my mask. You can see I did wrap my mask around like the back. This just helps so that when I'm ink blending, I don't catch a corner and pull it up. Um, and now we're going to zoom in and we're going to start the coloring. So this stamp is drawn in a way that really kind of shows you where the darker part should be. So any point where you see these kind of diagonal lines, like the lines that are added in, that part is supposed to be shaded. So that makes it really easy to go in and see where the shading is supposed to be. Um, it just, there's like, there's no easier way to color. 
The other rules that we're going to apply are the same as always when we're coloring with alcohol markers uh, or any medium, really, is any point where two things meet will be darker, any point where one lays on top of the other. So his hat, like the brim of his hat, is kind of folded over and it's meeting in that area. The part that the part of the brim that's tucked under will have shadow. The part of the brim that's on top will be our highlight. Now, if you watched my previous video with Eudora, uh, you know that I'm challenging myself to use my Olo markers more because I'm really in the comfort zone with my uh, Copic markers and my alcohol blends. And so, I mean, I invested in these. I paid for them. Um, you know, I really need to force myself to get out there and, and use them. And so, plus it helps me, um, it helps me to just stretch as an artist, you know, but the Olo markers, they have, um, I think there's like 120, I think, on the market. Um, but they they don't have as many options. That's not a bad thing because I don't believe you need all the Copic markers either. That's what our next video with the cornucopia is about. But anyway, um, so I am having to find new combinations to get the look that I want. So here I finished my highlight areas with my lightest color. Now I am going to go back in and I'm just going to add a little bit of texture to his hat. I wanted it to look like it was kind of like made of burlap. So I used my mid-tone and I'm going in and I'm adding kind of like a cross hatch. So I'm going in diagonal one way and then diagonal the other way. Here's the thing. When you want to do this, you can't just do it as one full piece. You have to do it in the sections because if you just draw straight lines all the way across this, it's not going to look right because the material isn't meant to be perfectly lined up. So you have to do the, the cross hatching in each individual section. Now we're going to move on to the pumpkin. So Again, there's areas here, like right underneath his hat, that are drawn um, on the left-hand side of his face, has that those lines for shading. So I'm just following those areas and filling in my darkness. Where the sections are drawn in to the face, I'm adding a little bit more darkness. But I am being very careful because, again, I'm not real comfortable with these markers. So I'm being careful to make sure that I don't go too dark right away. I know I'm heavy-handed. I know that that's a problem that I have. Um, so I am just being conscientious to not, be, to not go in too dark right out the gate. Uh, while we finish coloring up this pumpkin, let's talk about some things. So Colorado Crafts is doing a giveaway um, with this release. I didn't mention it in the first video because I wasn't 100% sure. So basically, if you shop through my affiliate link, it's linked below on YouTube in the description, um, they are going to still give away a complete bundle to one winner. Um, just like they typically do. Um, but it's just going to be, it's just going to be us because it's a kind of a solo designer release and I'm the solo designer. Um, and then you get one entry per order for that. Uh, I know last month, um, or in the, no, in the beach release, one of the, um, girls bought like the, the smaller stamp set. It was like $5 and there was free shipping at that time. Um, and so she was like, yeah, it's just five bucks. Like I'll buy it. And then she ended up being the one who won and I could not be more thrilled for her. Like how fantastic. Um, let's go back to the card. So here I, I ended up changing this, but again, I'm learning with these markers just like you guys are. So I went in with the lightest color orange and I colored in the portion of the cutout um, of the eyes, the eyebrows, the nose. I love those eyebrows, by the way. Um, and the mouth. And then I'm going to do yellow on the inside. Uh, we come back and change this. So just know that when you're going through and you're experimenting with them, um, that it's okay that, that everybody does that. So anywho, so they're gonna pick um they're gonna pick a winner from the uh the link if you shop through there. And then they're also going to pick three winners to send a random stamp set. So make sure you're heading over to the blog to comment, make sure you're commenting here on YouTube, over on Instagram, um, you know, just to get yourself as many entries as possible. You guys know I'm a big proponent of but you know, trying to win free items. Um, and so just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we're on to the straw or the hay that our, our scarecrow is um, stuffed with. So he's got some straw hair. He also has some straw that's kind of coming out of his neck down there at the bottom. Um, 
And so I picked a yellow combination that I felt was going to be relatively close to what my normal combination would be. And it turns out it's a lot brighter. And it it's a very, very bright yellow combination. Um, and it's almost... It, it was almost too bright. It was starting to, like, my yellow was blending into my orange because of they both had this brightness factor. And I really wanted the pumpkin to be bright. I felt like the straw was maybe the wrong color. It was just too much. It distracted from my scarecrow pumpkin face. Um, and so I'm. this is where that shading with grays, it's going to be later on in the video, is going to come into play. And we're going to talk about how you can knock back those colors and without having to like stay, like we're invested. And you guys know, I feel like everything is fixable. We're really invested at this point. So I don't want to have to go back and do everything all over again. I just want to work with what I have. Um, and I think that's super, super important. So um, yeah, as far as I chose to do his little um, top what do we call it? Jacket? It looks like a jacket. It's got a little button. His little jacket green, because uh, I felt like that played nicely with the other colors. But I think purple would work as well, um, you know, or a, a red maybe. Um, I think all like those colors would look nice. I liked the green the best. But again, I was running into a little bit of a problem where my yellow greens were a very, very bright combination. And so I was kind of struggling to make that pumpkin the brightest focal point uh, in my scarecrow, which is what I wanted. I wanted you to look at the scene and be drawn into that pumpkin. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So anyway, we'll talk about the technique when we get there. As far as life, um, what, what's been going on with life? We haven't had a lot of story time. Even my husband commented on it. He was like, you haven't been having a lot of story time. And I was like, I know, because we're doing so many techniques. Um, but I do just want to, like, kind of briefly recap a, a little bit. Um, so I was supposed to go on a retreat this weekend. It didn't end up working out. My anxiety kind of got the better of me. Uh, I did try. Um and maybe we'll talk about this more in depth when um, when I have my head wrapped around it a little bit more. Um, but I did try and I was just unsuccessful. And I feel like if I was supposed to be there, like I would be there. Everything was set up for me to make it. And if God wanted me there, then I would have made it. And I didn't. And so I'm home with my family and uh, that's totally okay. I'm, I'm okay with it. All right, let's talk about this technique. So here I started with a W3. Okay, and you can see that I'm going in, I'm going over those darker areas that are not like closest to the face, and it's really knocking back that color, but it wasn't doing it enough. So then I went in with, this might have been a hair too dark, honestly, I went in with a W7. Why did I choose the W uh, grays instead of the cool grays? Because yellow is a warmer color. That's That was the uh, thought process behind that. So I went in with the W7, and now you can see those highlight pieces are popping, and they're really bright, um, instead of everything being really, really bright. And so we're I'm going to go in, again, I'm still using that W7, I'm going to do the pieces of the straw or hay down here, and then for the green... I'm going to go right over top of it um, for the majority of it. The only part I'm going to leave light is the highlights, um, you know, just so some peeps of that green are kind of sticking out. And you're going to think to yourself, Kelly, that looks brown. It looks brown on the yellow and it looks brown on the green and I don't like it. And you're not wrong. I mean, truly, you're you're not wrong. It does look brown, but it doesn't have to stay that way. So I'm going to go in now. This is with a W5. And I'm just kind of going over any of the areas I want to be a little lighter. The Olo markers are a free-flowing ink, which means they're much juicier than the Copics. So they bleach out their colors quite a bit more. So that's just something to be aware of. And then anywhere that I want to stay bright, I'm going to go back in with that with that yellow and go right over it again because they, you know, kind of like bleach out and remove that color pretty well. Um, you can go back in and kind of layer the colors. Um, I wanted the, like the little, um, 
the the light that's kind of like shining on him to catch the like the high portions and so here I'm going in this is a slightly lighter yellow um it is a Y1.2 so it's just a little bit softer and that's originally what I went in with and I feel like it makes sense for like the top of the hat like those high points in the folds um but it is a not quite bright enough for around the face. So I'm going to go in. Here's me layering on those greens, you know, because I don't want it to look brown. I want it to look green. Um, and so sometimes that means here I'm going in. This is the darkest green color that I used before. And I'm layering that over some of the grays. I'm definitely getting more muted tones now, which is what I wanted. Um... It just requires me to layer a little bit of color, which normally I don't do. Am I willing to do it to get the look that I want to achieve? Absolutely. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. Because if you don't have a lot, it doesn't matter what alcohol markers you're using. If it's Olo's, sketch markers, Copics, um, you know, we talked about this before. If you don't have a lot of colors, this will be super helpful for you because buying the grays, even though they're boring, give you a ton of options for shading. Here I decided this is the Y 2.3 and so it is a bit stronger of a yellow and I went in and added that to the hat closest to the face where we have the you know the brightest portion. Here I'm going in and just filling in any blue where my mask didn't completely line up and then I decided that I wanted my pumpkin to be a little bit darker. So I'm going in this is the same co color combination I haven't changed anything I'm just adding a bit more darkness around his face so that the front of his face where his like the actual face is the front of the pumpkin is lights up a little bit more so he really is the the focal point but we have to create highlights and lowlights to have a contrast um if we want dimensional coloring. So here I'm going to go in with my zero marker and that's this is why I told you we were going to change it. Um, I just went right over that little inside lip and I felt like that looked so much better to like lighten it up um, and it didn't blend in with the rest of the pumpkin as much. So anyway back to my my driving. So I, I am a firm believer in um, that if I was supposed to be there I would have made it and like just it's like super shout out to my husband who was really, really great about it. He had taken the day off to drive me because we learned earlier in the week that I absolutely cannot drive myself. Um, and then my friend Lisa and Kelly, they were willing to come like pick me up halfway so Eric didn't have to come get me. And I just couldn't do it. Um, I, I'm not sure what was happening. I did. I'm not going to pretend like I didn't. I did get frustrated with myself because I don't understand why I am this way, but I do trust that God has a has a plan and um and I'm so I'm okay with it. I've come to terms with it. And I'll just, you know, do some more work on myself, maybe readjust my medication and then go from there. But so that that's kind of what happened this weekend. Like I said, may we'll possibly revisit the me trying to drive on the highway by myself, <laughs> which was a disaster. Um maybe later on. But anywho, so here I just treated with an anti-static tool. I really like the sentiments in this. They're very playful. And so I chose the Silly as a Scarecrow one. I just stamped that um, and I in white pigment ink, and then I'm heat embossing it in white embossing powder. I'm going to go in, add a couple of white highlights to the... Um, well, no, I'm going to do the shimmers first so I don't smear my white highlights. That makes sense. So I did some shimmers because you know I love a good shimmer. And then I'm going to add some white highlights. And then we're going to be, then that's going to be it. Um, but yeah, so I'm super excited. There's a little, there's a little extra in the next video, which is the uh, cornucopia set. Um, it won't be the next one in succession. I have some other things that are due beforehand, but it will be the next one uh, for this release. And there's like a little surprise bit I think that you guys will enjoy because you do get story time. Um, and so you do know, uh, you know, you, you know, the ins and outs of my life. Um, so yeah, so that'll be fun. Look forward to that. So then this is the whole card. Um, again, the release is live in the shop. I hope you'll head over and, and check it out and check out the Halloween sale. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.